Now, uh, 2016 looks set to be a big one for Scottish politics. The Hollywood elections in May, of course, will show just how far the SNP has cemented its position and support and will be one of the first key tests of whether Labour under Jeremy Corbyn can win back the votes it lost to the SNP last year. Well, I'm joined now by Scotland's Deputy First Minister, John Swinney. He's in Blairgowrie in Perthshire. And a very good morning to you, Mr Swinney. Let's talk uh, flooding, of course, in everyone's mind. And we know more bad weather forecast for, for Scotland in uh, other areas. And uh, according to your opponents, uh, you uh, have failed to keep your eye on the ball in your recent budget. Uh, you, what, you've cut the uh, Scottish Environmental Protection Agency's budget by 6% and they're in the front line of dealing with flooding. Well, the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency, of course, has a broad range of responsibilities. And what the budget settlement provides for is sustained funding for the flood forecasting service, for example, and also for the investment that's necessary in a variety of flood protection and flood alleviation schemes, which we've sustained since we came to office in 2007, and which we intend to sustain for the duration of this budget settlement. So we, we've got a lot of work that's being done just now to protect communities from the harsh effects of flooding. I, I was up in Ballater on Thursday to see at first hand the very acute difficulties that have been experienced. And the First Minister was down in the southwest of Scotland. And flooding and the implications of flooding are very serious for individuals. And the government is committed to doing all that we can to support communities in withstanding these challenges. By going to visit them, but not spending enough money on the flood defences. So you froze the uh, cash available for flooding in 2016-17 .17 at 9.1 million. Shouldn't you have increased it? Well, what we've done is we've put in place capital funding for flood prevention schemes, which is uh, by agreement with our local authority partners. And we take forward a range of schemes. We've taken forward schemes in Edinburgh, in Elgin, in Selkirk, in Gala Shields, uh, right across the length and breadth of Scotland over the last... Uh, six, uh, last nine years and we will of course take forward a variety of other schemes that are brought forward as a consequence of the spending round in which we become involved and what we what we do and what we work with our local authority partners to do is to make sure that all of the preventative activity that we can undertake is put in place to support communities in establishing a much more resilient approach to dealing with flooding and to ensure that we support communities where these very harsh effects take their course, that we recover as quickly as we possibly can do. OK, uh, let's uh, move on to the uh, issue of the Hollywood elections then. Do you detect, and uh, Labour sources are telling us they do, uh, will you deny it, that uh, those Labour supporters who voted for the SNP in the general election may well return to the party now Jeremy Corbyn is in charge? There's not really any evidence of that in Scotland. The Opinion polls are still very strong for the Scottish National Party. There was one just before the New Year which had our support at in excess of 50% for both the constituency and the regional parliamentary election results. And th these, are, these are, of course, only opinion polls, but they are an indication of the strong support that the Scottish National Party still enjoys. And when you add to that the variety of local authority by-elections that have taken place over the course of the last few months. Uh, we've seen the levels of support that we gained in the general election back in May being continued to be delivered. So uh, these are all indications of the strength of support that exists for the Scottish National Party, but we take none of that support for granted. We work very hard and our candidates around the country, our campaign teams around the country, will work very hard over the course of the next few months to engage directly with voters to set out the strength of the record of the SNP government, to make the approach uh, and to set out the approach that we would take if we were fortunate enough to secure a mandate in the elections in May. And of course, set out the challenges that our First Minister Nicola Sturgeon wants to take forward uh, should she be re-elected as the First Minister of Scotland in May. So we've got yep. a strong record to campaign on. We've got a forward agenda, an ambitious yep. agenda for Scotland, and we'll take that to the people. Well, people will just be interested to know, of course, on the issue of another independence referendum, what you will set out in that manifesto for the Scottish elections about um, what you would regard specifically as the trigger from uh, a negative result overall in the United Kingdom for remaining uh, a member of the uh, European Union, what you would then regard as a, as a trigger then for another referendum on Scottish independence? We've said two things about the question of uh, a second referendum. The first is that 
clearly a, a, a UK exit against the wishes of the people of Scotland from the European Union um, would really be a very serious change in the proposition that was put to people in the referendum by the No campaign. It was one of the strongest arguments the No campaign advanced, which was the only way you could guarantee your EU membership was to vote no. And of course, we might find ourselves against our wishes facing exactly that scenario. So that would be a very significant change of circumstances. But the second thing we've said is that there would have to be a discernible and sustained increase in support for independence as a consequence of the change in attitudes within Scotland. At the referendum, we secured a very strong level of support for independence at 45%. Yeah. It was much higher than anybody uh, anticipated, much higher than our, uh, our opponents were trying to uh, see levels of support for independence achieving. Uh, but it wasn't enough. And we have to recognise that people have to change their opinions, they have to change their minds substantially before Scotland could become an independent country. So but we'll flesh out in more detail in our manifesto exactly okay. what the circumstances and the details would be around about that. But we have to be mindful of those two yeah. considerations. I just want to squeeze the last question into you, Mr Swinney, but a savvy SNP voter would listen to that to, and say, well, hold on a minute. Is Mr Swinney telling me to, although I do want to stay in the European Union, if I want another referendum as quickly as possible, it might be in my interest to vote tactically in the EU referendum and vote no. Well, the SNP will enthusiastically and energetically campaign for the United Kingdom to remain part of the European Union. We believe that to be the right thing for Scotland and the right thing for the European Union. So no SNP voter, no voter of any political party will be in any doubt that the SNP is absolutely committed to EU membership and will work very hard to make sure that's the case. OK. John Swinney, thank you very much indeed, Deputy First Minister.